Public hearing, town meeting dates. The North Reading Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on January 7, 2008 at 8.15 p.m. in room 14, North Reading Town Hall, 235 North Street, to receive public input on selecting dates for the April and October 2008 town meetings in accordance with North Reading Home Rule Charter 2-4-1. For those don't recall, I believe it was two years ago, we ran into a situation where we moved, I believe it was an October <coughs> town meeting because of a, I think it was a Jewish holiday. And uh, as a result of that, a subsequent April town meeting, we uh, modified our uh, bylaws uh, permitting the Board of Selectmen in January, first meeting in January, to set the dates uh, for April and October town meeting, taking into consideration special observances. With that, Mr. Bellaconis, uh, I have not had the opportunity to check on <laughs> religious holidays, and I hope that you have. Um, the town clerk and the town administrator recommend the annual town meeting uh, open on April 7th, which is the traditional first Monday in, uh, in April, and that the October town meeting convene on October 6th, which is the traditional first Monday in October. Which um, says there's no holidays. We're not okay. aware of any holidays. However, there may be someone here this evening that will inform us otherwise. We've checked all uh, all of our uh, information sources, and we can find that there are no conflicts with those dates. It is important, however, to note that if town meeting, the October town meeting, would go to a second night, that would be October 9th, and that is a, a religious holiday. Uh, I believe it's Yom Kippur, and then you run into a conflict on the following Monday, which happens to be Columbus Day, October 13th. So um, in order to stick with the uh, no quorum requirement, that would then provide that a second session of town meeting would be extended out until um, this Thursday, October 16th. We may not get there, but there is no conflict for that first evening. Anybody in the audience have any input to this? Uh, recommended set of dates by the town administrator, which would be April 7th and October 6th. Hearing none, do we have a motion? Can I close the public hearing? What? Close public Clo hearing. I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Harris. Motion. Mr. Chairman, in accordance with the Town of North Reading Charter 2-4-1, I move to set the dates for the 2008 town meeting as follows. April 7th, 2008. And October 6, 2008. Second. Motion made by Mr. Harris, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Now, administrator's report. Did we do legal? No, sir. What? Did we do legal? Legal. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah, we did legal. Yes, we did. That's right. Yeah, that's right. We did that earlier. Yeah, we went over earlier. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Abby is inquiring about this uh, tentative meeting that the superintendent of schools is going to arrange on Friday with MSBA. And uh, whether the, the board members would be available. Um, I have a conflict on that day. I'll be in the MMA conference. The, the one day of the year that I'm going to be there. Um, if, it's, if it's finalized, then I can make it. If it's kind of pie in the sky, maybe it's going to happen. Maybe it's not. I'm planning on attending the conference. What is this? David uh, has received uh, from the uh, Well, when I, is it again? What's the date? This Friday. Friday. This Friday. <coughs> <coughs> I cannot. I cannot. I said I'd go to that meeting. So. Right. 
sorry for the interruption. But we haven't heard officially. Basically. Well, I saw David at a meeting one Friday afternoon and he asked about the Bill Lane. As far as I know, it is different. But um, I'll send him an email uh, tonight and uh, let him know that he was in there exactly. No, I'm not going to call him. I'm going to call him myself. I'm almost positive I can't make it. I, I know I can't. cannot make it. And uh, since about quarter or seven tonight, it's just been bombarded. Uh, I was handed, uh, just as the meeting began, a copy of the information packet that uh, is the affordable housing lottery information for the Edgewood apartment. And uh, as you will recall, this is one of the items that the Department of Housing and Community Development wanted to review and approve um, before they would uh, entertain receipt of the density bonus payment under the Chapter 40 hour project for the town. And uh, I received it, haven't reviewed it, but I did have an opportunity to uh, glance through some of the details um, that I, I did want to mention to the board. The, um, the application uh, will be available here at Town Hall at the Zoning Board Office and at the library uh, between now and uh, February 25th. And applications are due in on February 25th. The lottery will be held on March 12th. And there are a total of, um, excuse me, 102 units that are part of this affordable housing lottery, a mix of two bedroom and one bedroom units. And um, interestingly enough, a significant portion of those units are reserved through something that uh, we've documented and requested called a local preference, which would be for um, residents of town or um, municipal and school employees of the town. Of that 102 units, about 70 are reserved through the local preference process. <coughs> the gentleman who was here earlier tonight indicated to me that uh, typically the lottery process starts slow. Um, these aren't um, free apartments. They're discounted rate, but they're still over $1,000 a month. And typically it takes a, a year or two for the uh, apartment to fill. So um, conceivably the lottery will be held and um, not all of the units will be spoken for at that time. So there'll be additional applications that will be taken. But in the event um, a significant number of applications are received, there's a, a procedure that goes through. And that lottery again will be held here at Town Hall on October 12th, right here on the 14th. So I do have a copy of this. I'd be happy to pass it around to the board members. Does that information be advertised? Yes, it has to be advertised. And again, the application packets will be available here at Town Hall and at the library. Go back to my written report. First on my list is uh, reporting on the telephone system <coughs> here at Town Hall. As you know, we uh, installed a new telephone system uh, last Thursday and Friday. Um, I think it worked out pretty well. All the employees have been trained on the operation of the telephone system, including voicemail features. Um, the system includes voice, voicemail for all of our department heads and employees here at Town Hall. Um, we will be shortly beginning phase two of the telephone installation, which involves the library and the senior center. The one remaining issue that we do need to spend some time on before we um, issue a contract 
is uh, procuring a uh, means of providing conductivity from the uh, senior center and library to the police station where the uh, hub is, is being located. So we, we need to resolve that and that will be a separate contract. The good news is the uh, bids that we had issued for town hall and for the police station and fire station, uh, we also asked for uh, a bid price on the uh, library and the senior center. So we'll be exercising those options. Uh, we'll be exercising those options having the same system that we have in place here installed in, the, uh, in those two facilities. So, any questions about it? Uh, phone numbers uh, that are published on the website. Yes. Uh, any of those changed? Or? Um, for, for the public purposes, they will not have changed. So you can contact us by the normal means that are in the phone book. Um, those numbers will have full-time voicemail. So when town hall is closed, those published numbers that are in the phone book, uh, there'll be message service available to pick up calls and take care of calls that are coming in. Um, we do have a new block of numbers that we've been issued, but um, we've arranged that they'll ring off of the new set of numbers and the existing set of numbers. And the cost of retaining those old numbers is um, in the order of 50 cents per number per month, so it's a really small cost. Great. Congratulations. Yeah. A little later. We were ready to go before the holiday, but we wanted to wait to get our employees trained. Well, it's exciting. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really uh, brings us up into a modern age. Yeah. I had actually had someone call me last uh, two weeks ago saying, I've been trying to get hold of town hall. There's no one answering the phone. I said, I'll try it in a week or so. Yeah. I said, at least you'll get a voicemail. There's a voicemail. Well, didn't call me. Cause they, were, they were surprised they, that they, they didn't have a voicemail at that. Does the system allow you? Does the system allow you to uh, to opt out of the uh, the uh, message center and get to a uh, yes an operator? Yes. Getting zero when you when you if, when it goes to voicemail, it goes to a sent bring yes. it to some other desk. And there there are all the <coughs> exceptions that we have. There are some offices where there are three or four employees that are responsible for picking up a ringing phone. So before the the um, it goes to voicemail, it'll ring on someone else's desk. And so in those situations, voicemail is maybe the third option or the fourth option. <coughs> First, second, and third options are all live people that are sitting at desks. Right. What we want to avoid is that voicemail is a reason not to pick up a ringing phone. Um, if someone is busy, someone's away from the desk on another line, the building is closed, then voicemail is very appropriate. But to have it um, substitute for someone picking up the phone live, um, there's no substitute to that. We want to do away from that. And people have been instructed that they, they, they check their mail every day and voicemail every day and respond yeah, it's, quickly. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge because everyone has a responsibility for, um, they, they all went through training. Yes. And they're all given an opportunity to set up their, um, their message boxes. Mm -hmm. And some have done so and done so diligently. <laughs> and others are still learning the process. Um, but the, um, the main emphasis is that everyone will have it. That's great. Everyone has to have it. It's not an option. And there's a flag on the phone instead of voicemail, right? Yeah, it, it does some pretty neat stuff. I'll, I'll show it to you sometime. But uh, it's pretty pretty good in terms of what it what it offers. Pretty yeah. impressive, considering where we were at before. Yes. Thank you. Uh, number two. Um, <coughs> just an update on the VIC. I'm going to be attending a meeting of the Insurance Advisory Commission uh, next week, and it's specifically for the purpose of introducing the GIC Health Insurance Program. A representative from the GIC um, will be present here at Town Hall, and he'll be presenting information to our unions and to our employees about the advantages of the GIC. This is a follow-up to the meeting that we had earlier with the Insurance Advisory Committee, which convened in December to review health insurance options with our present carrier, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts. I think I might have mentioned to a couple of members of what I found that was very encouraging from that meeting that we had in December is uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is prepared to offer North Reading and I'm sure other communities competitively priced health insurance programs that are similar to what the GIC has. So 
not only are we looking 